For learning activity 2.8 in your slides, we're going to use Draw.io to show you how to use Draw.io and so you can submit your assignment. So what you do is you go to Draw.io in your browser and it will open, it will ask you to authorize an account. You can use Google Drive or you can use OneDrive or Dropbox or even just save it to your local machine. After you've authorized an account, you select the basic flowchart as the default diagram and it will open up this blank canvas after you name it what you want to name the file. I named it summaryexample.html as you can see here in the top left. Then you should see this canvas just like I'm seeing it. What you're going to do is click on this general tab to minimize it and then we're going to work with the entity relationship diagram tab as you can see here on the left. So I copied the text from the slide, as you can see here on the canvas, so that's what we're going to work with. There are a few ways that you can model entities. I'm just going to dra drag a few of these options onto the slide so you can kind of see what there is to work with. So there's four different kinds that you could use. This one has a primary key field. This one has some color. I'm just going to stick with the basic entity as you can see right here and I'm gonna resize it so that it looks a lot bigger so now that I resized it now we have the entity up here I'm going to click this top arrow on the right sidebar that is going to move it to the top and then we want to identify which entities that I'm going to work with so it says professors are assigned to one department so I'm going to first identify this as a professor entity. Then I'm going to add another entity, and this entity is going to be department also from that previous sentence. After I've added department, I'll add a course. So I'm just using copy and paste, control C, control V. You can also use it by uh, right-clicking the object and saying duplicate. So I'm going to identify a course because the next one says a department offers many courses. The next thing I'm going to add is a section because it says a course may have multiple sections. So I'm just going to drag this here and we're going to put section right there. Then it also says a se each section is taught by only one professor. We already have section and professor so I'm not going to do that right now. It also says students may enroll in many classes or none at all. So I'm going to add another entity and this time we're going to add the student entity. And then it says students may declare zero or many majors, so I'm going to add another entity and we'll call this one major. And then finally it says students receive a grade at the completion of a course. This sounds like an attribute rather than an entity itself and we'll figure that out as we go through identifying attributes and relationships. So now let's go through and identify the attributes of professor. So I'm going to left align and add my first attribute. So just like students, professors have a net ID and this is going to be the unique attribute that I'm going to use for the particular professor. Then we have name, then we have office number, then we have location or address, so we could add address, and then we have street, city, state, and zip code, and then we also have a uh, phone and we have email. So the, all these are good attributes of professor. I'm going to copy these and go down to the student entity and I'm going to paste them there as well. I'm going to left align them so that they match up with above. The only thing that a student won't need is probably an office number so I'm going to remove that. Then we go to the department entity and we try to identify the attributes that are there. So we have department number or ID and we'll give that the unique identifier and then we have the name of the department, the location or building that it's in and a few other attributes if you want you can add those. Then we go to course and we're going to add a few attributes here so we have course ID so that could be like BIA 782 or some other variant. We also have the name of the course, the credit hours, the description of the course, etc. So let's go to section now. We have the section number or the section ID. For example, for the courses of Creighton it's either 1 or it, or A, B, C, D or N for night class, etc. So we have the section, we have the location, location of the section, the time, the dates that they meet, that could be Tuesday, Thursday, etc. And then finally as major we have the ID of major 
and then we're going to give that the unique identifier. We have the name of the major, the total credits to complete the major, the description of the major, anything else that is pertinent. So now that we've done the first two steps of identifying the entities and the attributes, and then the third step of identifying the identifiers, we're now ready to create the relationships. So as you can see here, there's a bunch of relationships that exist down here. So I just need to find the ones that I want to work with. So for example, professor is assigned to one department, but a department can have multiple professors. So this sounds like what I'm looking for. So I'm going to drag this here, and I'm going to drag that there. And if you get the ugly arrows working out like that, you can click on the Style tab over here and just click the straight arrow, and it will move it to look like it's a lot better. So this basically says a professor is assigned to one and only one department, which makes sense, and a department can have one to many to prof professors. So we're just going to name this has as part of our relationship. Then if I want whatever the previous style I used, I can use that again. So by just clicking when you see the green bullet and dragging to where I want it to be. This actually only works in when I change the ends. So I'm going to go over here and change the ends to the ones that I want. So a department offers one to many courses and a course is offered by one and only one department. So I'm going to name this by saying offers and now we have the relationship that exists there. So now that I've created the one to many relationship I can do the same by dragging the green dot. So now we are saying a course offers one to many sections and a section is part of one course. Now a student can take multiple sections not of one course but multiple sections so we can say a student takes one to many sections and a section has multiple students so this is going to be a many to many relationship so I just drag it and now this is incorrect so I can actually go over here to the side click the drop down arrow and find the one that I'm looking for so a section has at least one and many students and a student has takes one to many sections so we have a many-to-many -many relationship there, which we'll take care of in just a minute. It also says that each section is taught by only one professor. So I'm going to take this and drag it over there. And I'm going to change this to a right angle. So you click this drop down an arrow and right angle so that it looks better. I'm going to change the beginning point to mandatory one. So now a professor teaches one to many sections, but a section is taught by one and only one professor, so that meets the constraints that we have identified. The next thing says, and students may enroll in classes or not at all, so that's how we capture that. Then it says, students may declare zero or many majors. So a de student declares zero many majors, so I just drag that again. Now I'm going to change this out point. Instead of mandatory many, it's going to be optional many and then a major can have one to many students. Alright, so now we have created our model with all the relationships. We need to name this relationship um, declares a major. I'm just going to space these out a little bit, grab all this, move it over with the over arrow. Alright, so now that we have our relationships, there's two that we need to handle. For example, a student declares zero to many majors, and a major has one to many students, so that would require an associative entity. And then a student takes many sections, and a section is taught by one to many students, so that would also require an associative entity. So I'm basically going to just copy the section entity, and I'm going to paste it down here, because this will be my associative entity. And I'm going to copy this major entity, and I'm going to paste it down here, and this will become my many my associative entity as well. I'm going to highlight these two since they're associative entities. I want them to have rounded corners, so I am going to be in the style tab here on the right and just check this rounded checkbox and it changes them to rounded corners. And now I'm going to draw my arrows. So we have a section has one to many students, so I need to change this to a mandatory one and then I need to change my endpoint to a mandatory many. And a student takes one too many sections. A major has one too many students that declare that major. And then a student declares optional to many majors. So optional many majors. And that's what our diagram looks like.
So now that we have this diagram, we need to name these new relationships. So this section is, is taken by many students, and a student takes many sections, a student declares many majors, and a major is declared by many students. So that I can uncover these, I'm just going to grab this yellow bullet point and move it up so that it doesn't block up the takes. So now that I have my relationships here, I'm going to delete the old relationships, and now we're going to name these something more pertinent. So this is going to be a student major, so the student declares the major. So as the primary key, we're going to have major ID and net ID. So this is a composite attribute. And then as part of the major, we can have like time declared, uh, advisor, etc. And then over here in the student section, we could call this grade, for instance. So a student takes a section and receives a grade. So we have section ID and net ID become the primary key or the identifier, the composite identifier. And then as here, we actually have the grade that they receive on completing the course. So these would be the steps I would take to complete this model. So do your best on the homework, and if you have any questions, let me know.